1940. The last few days really flew by and honestly I haven't picked up my camera too much mainly because I've just been so dialed in and focused on applying processes and systems and what we're creating currently is a foundation that is very scalable especially once we have hundreds of employees, which I know this business will have because it's a very labor intensive business. We will have to have that foundation in place to make sure that it's scalable. So how does that work? I always think of it as a pyramid where you have you yourself at the top. So let's say you have 33 employees, excluding yourself. You're at the top of the pyramid and below that you have three people. Now those three people manage 10 people themselves. and this is the way you go about having a you know sizable company because the more communication happens between those teams and if you try and just stay in 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 the loop of everything you're gonna go crazy trust me I've tried and it's not working so you want to make sure that you pass on responsibility to those three people below you so that they can report everything back to you for that specific department and I'm just swimming in things and responsibilities that I have to own and take care of and the way I go about when having so much pressure is mainly just by prioritizing so I try and just get everything out of my system I go for a run I go for I've been boxing the last few days and once I've done that I just get everything on paper so I write down exactly no computer I just take a pen and paper and I write down exactly what I want to do or what's on my mind and then I start to prioritize and then step by step I slowly power through this workload and I delegate whatever I can delegate. I also decided to fly in two more team members Wojtek and Ruben. They're arriving tonight and I've spoken about this in a previous video. There's so much going on and it's impossible to keep everyone 100% in the loop and the size of what we're doing hiring like local people here in China getting the infrastructure in place I think is such an important part that I, of, of the business that I want them to be part of. So decided to fly them out as well. So they're gonna be arriving tonight. And other than that, it's not really, you know, any fancy updates. I'm just gonna, you know, get dressed, get ready, head to the office and just get a lot of work done. Now, they have better product, better quality, better communication, and they also actually can help this brand scale. You're taking shots together with the receptionist, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she, she also took one, you saw? Oh, bro, so she told me, I was like, what's kind of, what, what's that medicine? She was like, yeah, it's for your, it's for your throat, it's good for your throat. I was like, give me water. And she was like, no, 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 when you take this medicine, you can't drink water for another 10 minutes. So I was like, okay, because my throat is actually a little sore. So I thought, you know, it happened for a reason. Good, good. But echt nice that you guys have, man. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, man. Bro, so happy, to, so happy that you're here, man. To keep it real, even with these accolades, I don't know how to feel. Even all alone, I can't find any time to chill. All these eyes on me, I believe that looks to kill. To keep it real, to keep it real, can't follow the wave, can't follow the wave, no. No longer the same, no longer the same, no. Damn. Can't think of the fame, can't think of the pain, no. Uh. Teaching Ruben how to use those hands for different purposes than coding. To this day, it cracks me up that the Chinese really have no understanding of what they put on the wall when it comes to English. I mean, it's also kind of poetic. Beat yourself. Beat yourself. Alright, <laughs> right, so Ruben and I just finished our uh, little boxing lesson. It was Ruben's first time to uh, you know, <laughs> go boxing. The boys got to China. It's pretty crazy how now you can just walk into China as a Dutch citizen or Dutch pa yeah, Dutch passport holder without any visa. I remember, I mean, I've been coming to China for almost 15 years and 
and the amount of times I had to apply for a business visa where I had to go through so much shit to just get that visa and now that you as a Dutch citizen can just walk straight into China it's just quite crazy but the upside of it is that obviously uh, the boys got a 24 hour notice um, sorry a little interruption I had to drop Ruben at the hotel <laughs> but yeah as I said it's really crazy that you can now just walk straight into China and um, you don't need a visa you can just enter the, the country on a visa free 15 day uh, stay Daniel has been checking his YouTube statistics for the whole day already. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so quiet. <laughs> Daniel is a video editor now. Yeah, bro. I edit my own videos now. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, bro, I feel like editing these videos at the end of the day has kind of become like my way of just reflecting on everything that's going on. And it's kind of just like becoming the new reading of a book, you know, it's like how at the end of the day you're trying to wind down. I just, you know, spin up Final Cut, I load in all the files because I power through these videos like maximum like two hours. I've been going through something. 1,855 days I've been going through something Be afraid We have these statistics now, yeah, but it's mega man It's got to go, it's like the lat is my one time for hope Bro, the, from the first time when I got to China until now the development of the country in itself has truly been one of the craziest things that I've ever seen. Like I remember coming to Guangzhou, whatever, let's say 2015 and then August, let's say two months after going to China and then coming back, there was like a, a bunch of new skyscrapers and everything and the development of China is just constantly growing bigger and bigger and especially with what we're doing, we're at our warehouse right now and one of the things that we've been seeing is that Companies such as Timu, uh, Sheen um, are, are just doing such insane volume. Timu is, has currently 10% of the entire ad spend of Facebook to their name, which is, what was it, like like 4 billion US? They just injected so much capital into ad spend. Yeah, um, they're, and, and they're basically just disrupting the entire market because they're even selling products at a loss. And the result of this is that competitors such as Alibaba need to keep up with this volume. So the packages shipped from China to all over the world is increasing. And because of this, the actual shipping carriers have to also keep up because the supply um, and demand is just increasing across the board. Now, for brand owners like Vince, this has also resulted in, in, in some crazy stuff, right? Yeah, I think what, like, what you said, but also the shipping times that comes with it. Because, because of Steam, who has such a high standard, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they have like, uh, they have the three to five day standard of their shipping from China to all over the world, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. first and crazy. I remember talking uh, that we, that he said like, uh, what was it? Three four years ago, they had twenty days, yeah. twenty five days. Remember to the CEO that we spoke to the yeah like yeah, that. Yeah. From yeah. The, yeah yeah yeah. So he said like four only four years ago they were experiencing twenty to twenty five day delivery time frame, and now Timu is, is putting the bar so high to three to five days and Alibaba is just has to compete with them otherwise they're out of business. So because of Alibaba competing and all other logistic companies just have to stick to that as well. So yeah, I think the D2C space from China to the world is just getting better and better and it, that's enables a lot for brand owners. Taking my brand for an example, uh, what, we, what we have seen is before we had uh, a local PPL. So what we did, we first bought stock from China and then we shipped it overseas to a local 3PL because we always had the picture that to run a successful brand you have to stay to the next day delivery, right? This is the picture that we always had one year ago. Um, but the benefits that you get from shipping from China, the upside weighs so much more than the next day delivery time frame that doesn't really matter at all, right? If you just have very like very good communication with your customers, telling them what they can expect. For example, we now being able to ship worldwide 
here in the warehouse we ship to 60 countries and counting worldwide to enable global scale which from a local 3PL is never possible and nonetheless the time of stock inbound what we can do with uh, local factories shipping to the warehouse in the same day for example our factory from my brand is two hours uh, away from here so we call them when we are low on stock we have same day stock inbound and we can keep on scaling with, without the limit no limits never run out of stock and we never have so much cash tied in inventory because when we run low we can just keep on restocking it so we get same day stock alerts more countries more products more margins because of the the shipping costs that we save it's like it, it's just we're tapping into the future of e-commerce here from what i've been seeing as someone that really has grown up in china here and has seen the country grow to what it currently is today as well as what is happening within the direct to consumer space is that this really is the future of e-commerce because volume keeps increasing you're seeing um, better prices for shipment faster shipping times and brands are able to go global just as how Vince explained how they've done for their brand and big shipping carriers or even airlines are currently adopting and investing a lot of money into new planes to continuously keep fulfilling products directly from China to the world faster and faster and this is I firmly believe that this is the future of e-commerce I've seen the development of China for years consistently and it's becoming bigger and bigger more and more powerful and that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we've burned all our bridges and are going all in on, one, on this one thing because we know this is gonna go down the history books. Basically, I make sure all the products get actually built in terms of the actual uh, yeah, software engineering. So currently we wanna build out a special or customized quoting solution for all the, all the different products coming in. How long does it usually take? build a software tool from, from from scratch basically. From scratch I would say most SaaS B2B kind of products that are not too complicated should be a, yeah they, they should be be buildable within two to four months. I would say more three to four months including design. And then you would have like an MVP or like a base version. And after that yeah it's just a matter of adding features. Uh, depending on, on the actual demand for the features, of course, and the feedback you get from your initial users. But generally, like a first version should be buildable within like four months. Bro, I've been getting so many crazy messages from people just saying that they fuck with my content, man. It's, it's, been, it's been crazy, man. I don't even know what it's what to say bro it's it's just like every day i get like 10 new messages and i can't even keep up with respondents all of them it's crazy i'm back behind the camera like back in yeah the man office. dude like boy take behind the camera man yeah bro you, you uh, you've been with me since day one man <laughs> yes <laughs> the very first day bro hey <laughs> no good <laughs> <laughs> so we got a few more days in China and I've been on the road for almost two and a half months already now and I'm super excited to go back to Hong Kong because that's where I just you know it's kind of like my home where I have my entire setup I have all my clothes because when being on the road for two and a half months, I always just bring like a small suitcase so that I don't have to carry around a lot of clothes or just, you know, I've got like basic t-shirts and everything just because it's easy. You know, I don't have to carry around a suitcase everywhere and I'm just very mobile. So it's easy to hop around, go different places, switch hotels, which is what I need. I like the flexibility when I'm on the road, but I also love the stability of just waking up, making a coffee, get behind my desk and just power through my to-dos, which is really what I need right now. So. Excited to be flying back to Hong Kong. We've got Wojtek joining me for probably a month or so because I also mid-April have a wedding of one of my best friends in India and I'll be taking Wojtek with me and I'm actually flying my parents out as well. So 
it's gonna be uh, a day to remember that I know for sure. So yeah, that said, uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, let me know what you think of these videos in the comments. I uh, love to see what you guys think of these videos. And uh, of course, I'll try and uh, jump in on topics that you guys like to shine me some, uh, some more light on. So that said, see you guys in the next one and uh, I appreciate you being here.